I I just decided to go live since I had that Q&A and I'm making dinner so I don't really have a lot to do so I thought I would just go live and answer those questions okay but you're sitting up against my rice cooker so there we go okay how do I do this is how I do it what am I making um I am making I'm gonna pull some chicken I bet I should plug that in then huh so I'm gonna pull some chicken and I'm gonna put that with some vodka sauce and pasta for me and my man and our roommate it's gonna be really bomb and I'm very excited for it I know it's Taco Tuesday but it's pasta every day so pasta I'm um, sorry if this lighting's kind of funky we have like this weirdo lighting in our kitchen okay so best place on Oahu to find good grinds honestly like my favorite place for Hawaiian food in Hawaii is um, Alicia's. It's this super like little ghetto supermarket in Kalihi and it's like back in this like, it used to be a supermarket and then they had a fire and now it's just like really small like food stand, but it's so good. There's like the best poke on island and they have um, like roast beef all the time. It's so fucking good. Alicia's is my favorite. Um, but they also have this place, oh shit, I cannot remember the name of it, but it's in, uh, it's like in, Wa it's almost Waikiki, but almost like Kahala, it's like right on the edge, and they have these really good burritos, and it's like a Colby burrito with this like homemade coleslaw that they make, it's so fucking good. Um, pretty much anywhere in Hawaii though, they have such good food there. Um, how do I click next? Do I do X? Oh, how do I do the next question? Oh, this is annoying. Oh. Uh, I'm super ready for this ultra shenanigan snatch session. So on Thursday, on Thursday I'm going to hang out with Dennis, um, Bulk and Snorlax, aka United Lifters guy. Um, and we're going to get together and do a bunch of like muscle snatches. And it's going to be hella shenanigans and hella fun. I don't know why I just use the word hella so much. But it's going to be so much fun. Um, I'm really stoked to hang out with him and you, I get to try out their new stuff. They got new like sports bra, new leggings coming, and I finally get to try it and I'm so fucking stoked. And I would really like it to just go automatically to the next question, but it doesn't. Um, oh, I don't know why. I, <laughs> Darren, why do you look a little Asian in this? Uh, I don't know, I did kind of look Asian in that story, I don't know why. Um, it happens sometimes. Every once in a while, I just look a little hoppa, and I don't know what it is. Um, how do I... Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Aoki or Alesso? To be honest, I don't really listen to either of them. Um, sorry, I'm grabbing my chicken here. Blech. Oh, so I'm gonna pull my chicken. I've got some chicken here, and we're gonna make pulled chicken. And it's gonna go in our pasta. Wait, we're still good that right in there so basically you uh, <laughs> basically I just put the chicken in with some like chicken broth and I don't know if you can see it oh I don't want to spill it out oh no you guys can't see that um how about that there we go the chicken in like with some chicken broth and that's pretty much it I'll put in some garlic and some salt so that it's not like tasteless but um I use my like cheater, my like cheater garlic. But um, yeah, Alesso or Ryoki. To be honest, yeah, I don't really listen to either. But if I had to pick one, probably Alesso. I don't really like Aoki that much. Um, he's not bad, but like, he's also just not that great. Like, he's just not my favorite. Um, can we focus on my face, please, Instagram? Thanks. Um, yeah. Let's go next. Not a question. That embers kicked up my workouts good I'm so glad if you guys haven't tried ember you should totally try it so it's from um, my sponsors inspired nutrition nutraceuticals sorry I always call it nutrition inspired nutraceuticals and oh man ember is this thermogenic that just kicks your butt absolutely kicks your butt and makes you sweat tits sweat titties um, but it's really awesome and then I have a code with them and you save I think 
I think it's 10%, it could be like 15%, but you save um, some money if you just use my name, Sierra, and you can try like samples, they have samples for sale online, and then they also have like obviously the big tubs. Um, what's our next one? Bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh my goodness, I'm having trouble clicking the button. Um, what got you into weightlifting? Uh, I don't know if you mean like actually weightlifting or if you mean like powerlifting, but I'm going to say you probably mean powerlifting. Oh, how old am I? Uh, I'm 24. I just turned 24, like four days ago. It was just my birthday. Um, let's do this. And I just click the poultry button for my, yep, yeah, it's really easy. Um, I'm also going to make bread, so that'll be cool. Um, what got me into powerlifting, I actually, like, was chill. Um, I was in this, like, really abusive relationship, and... I basically like got really fat like after we broke up and I wanted to go to the gym and so I was like hey like I'm getting kind of fat I should go to the gym and I got an email from like the University of Iowa powerlifting team and yeah that's pretty much it I ended up going to the gym and they welcomed me with open arms and they taught me how to lift and no. Yes, Ember and Pre. Yeah, you can totally take Ember and Pre together. So when I do that, I take like half a scoop of Devastate and then a full scoop of Ember or else it's like way too much. Um, yeah, it's like way, way too much if you do a full scoop of both. But I'll do like the full scoop of Ember and a half scoop of Devastate or the other way around. Um, sorry, I got off topic. How I got into lifting. So yeah, they were like, hey, join the University of Iowa powerlifting team. And so I checked it out, ended up getting kicked out of the university. That's a whole nother story. If you want to hear that story, it's like on my Instagram somewhere. I can direct you that way. But, um, yeah, I ended up getting like kicked off, kicked out of the university and I just kept powerlifting and it became like my outlet. Like I really wanted to, um, um, whoever you are being a troll in here, I'm going to say it. Can I say the N word? No. And you're gonna get blocked after this. Like, don't be a fucking weirdo, dude. I hate when people are weird. Like, not when I hate when people are weird. I love when people are weird. But I hate when people are trolls. Like, if you're just gonna, like, come on here to troll, like, d don't. How about that? Just fucking don't. But, um, yeah, long story short, I, like, needed an outlet after I got broken up with, and powerlifting was it. And it, like, helped me to find like worth in myself outside of my looks so that's how I started um next question I have like my rice bowl my like rice paddle bowl is in front of this so it's hard for me to click it how do you get bigger hamstrings do more hamstring work uh, <laughs> I think that sounds bad um do more hamstring work like do stiff leg deadlifts RDLs You've got the hamstring curl machine. You've got, um, wow, just, there's so much you can do for your hamstrings. But I would stick with, like, stiff legs and RDLs. That's where I feel it the most in my hamstrings and my glutes. And that really works that posterior chain. If y'all would just give me one second, I have to go get my flour. I bought a Costco-sized bag of flour so it doesn't fit in my kitchen. So I have to go over there. Very back. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, so that's how you get bigger hamstrings. Just work your hamstrings more and work them heavy. So I like to, I've always done like a heavy hamstring work after my squats and my deadlifts, whether it's like good mornings or RDLs or like stiff legs or whatever the case is. Like I like to do um, all of my accessory work and I do a lot of hypertrophy with that um, after my heavy, <laughs> where's my flower? My flower's right here. I like to do that after my squats or my deadlifts. Um, get the main movement out of the way, and then you can work on your accessories afterwards. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, next question. Where do you see the biggest carryover from doing SSB squats? Uh, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. So SSB really works your upper back because you really have to focus on keeping that tight to stay upright. So that carries over to your deadlifts. Um, you, 
again, have to really focus on staying upright. So it really works on your core, like this way. So it really works your like upper back and your core because you have to focus on being able to stay upright throughout the whole movement. So that really works pretty much your whole torso. Um, it also works your quads differently because the weight, the camber of the bar makes the weight sit forward. So even though you're pushing back to really activate that posterior chain, you're also getting more quad stimulus because of where the weight sits. Um, yeah, so I've seen a lot of my athletes though, like I'll program them the SSB because they're like lacking something in their squat. Generally that's where it comes from is the squat. Um, most of the time it's like they have trouble staying upright and so I'll, um, they're either staying upright or having trouble sitting back in the squat. And so that is when I will really program that SSB in. Okay, now I'm just going to pick this up because to be honest, it's hard to do from down there. Next question. If I came to California on vacation, would you? Yeah, of course. No doubt about it. Just send me an email, send me a DM, um, whatever. Especially you, we've talked a lot. You already know, girl. Um. Psh, 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 psh. Oh, this is a really good question. When looking for a powerlifting coach, what's the number one important thing to remember? There's no one thing. That's a uh, short answer. Yeah, there's no one thing to look for in a coach. There's like so much. There's so much to keep in mind. And at this point, I have to go get more flour. This is what happens when you have a small kitchen and you buy Costco size like things. Um, so now I have to like knead my dough. Also, you guys are like getting my, this is how I make flour, or this is how I make my bread. Um, so there's no like one specific thing, short answer. You need to look at, you can look at their um, testimonials. So like what their current clients um, think of them. Um, you need to, Keep in mind, like, does their form look good? Because it's like, do you really want to learn form from someone whose form is trash? Like, does that make sense? Of course, if they're, um, oh my God, this dough is really wet. <sighs> it's like really squishy. Um, I definitely should have put more flour in this before I dumped it out. Um, you need to look at their current athletes. You can look at their current athletes, like, um, their, like, transformation. So I'm sure somewhere as a coach, they will have, um, their client transformations posted somewhere. And I don't mean like physically, I mean, as in like, what were they lifting before and what were they lifting now? Like, what did their form look like before? And what does their form look like now? You need to look at like what, I don't even, I don't even want to say certifications. Cause like, I'm going to tell you, I don't have any certifications. Certifications generally don't mean crap. Like they don't mean anything. Um, Certification just means that you spent the money to go get it done. Like, who has a college degree who, that they actually use? Girl, who? I, I can't name ten off the top. I can't even name five. <laughs> my hands are gross. I can't even name five off the top of my head because it's just not very common. Um, what you just really need to look at is you need to look at their results. You need to look at their clients and their results. Um, I also would not hire someone who has never competed. I would never hire someone who's only competed once. I would never hire someone, honestly, I would never hire someone who's never competed less than four or five times because they just don't know. They just don't have the experience. Oh my God, my hands are so doughy right now. They just don't have the experience that you need. They don't have, they don't know how to handle lifters. They don't know how to coach lifters if they haven't been in the situation enough. Does that make sense? I certainly hope so. Um, oh my God, I can't click the next question because my hands are disgusting right now. But um, you just need to look at their prior client successes, their experience, and honestly, most importantly, like if you get along with them, you can't hire someone like just based, I need to close my, I'm using an instant pot for my chicken and I didn't close the lid. Is it closed? you hear it? There we go. That's better. Um, so yeah, it's like the most important, most important, like number one thing is like, if you guys get along, like you need to have someone who understands you and understands your goals and cares about your goals. Because if this person's like, 
a good coach but doesn't give a fuck about your goals or like you guys don't get along like cool but your training is going to be miserable and it's just going to be someone who programs you and you're not going to have that like really great coach athlete relationship which is honestly one of the best things I think that's one of the best things about having a coach and being a coach is that relationship between coach and athlete and if you have someone who you like don't get along with or who you don't like really dig on a personal level then you're not going to have that you're just and it's just so I don't know I can't get over a fact of like how important it is to have that relationship with a coach because you could have someone who programs you or you could have someone who coaches you and those are two completely different things okay I have to wash my hands this is ridiculous um, for those of you who are just joining, I'm making bread, and my hands are really doughy right now. Sorry. Um, I'll get to the next question once my hands are clean, and I can touch my phone again. Oh my god, this water's really hot. Okay. So, next question. Oh no, I just got rid of the questions box. Come back. Um, will you ever compete in the EPC again? I literally, I remember I read this question and I forgot what the EPC was and I had to go and Google it. Um, honestly, I'm not sure if the right, like, opportunity came around, maybe. But I, yes, okay, sorry, I just saw Mars Alice. Yes, girl, like, or sorry, I don't actually know if you're a girl. I shouldn't have assumed that. Um, I cannot see your picture from here, but yeah, if the correct opportunity like presented itself, I might, but I don't like foresee myself traveling to Canada just to do a meet again. Um, that's kind of like why I moved to California. So I wouldn't have to travel so much to go to meets and it would kind of, um, like defeat the purpose if I went and like traveled, especially to Canada. I don't want to say that. that. I don't mean to say that like in a derogatory way, but it's just um, I don't have any reason to go up to Canada, really. And so if I went up there like just to compete, then that would just kind of like defeat the purpose of like really why I moved to California in a general sense, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I wasn't trying to insult Canada at all. Um, let's run some water in this bad boy. Next question. Do, 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 do. Okay, maybe. Click. Click. Am I going to EDC? Uh, so those of you who don't know, EDC is a Electric Daisy Carnival. It's a big EDM festival. And I am not sure if I'm going or not. Oh, well, this is a really bad angle. There we go. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to EDC or not. It all just depends on, to be honest, money. Like, I definitely have the funds to get there, but it's just like, if... I decide that's what I want to spend my money on or not because I have a lot of probably more important things to spend my money on than EDC but I do really want to go so if the opportunity presents itself where I get where I can go I will probably go but um if it comes to the point where I have to spend you know what is it 400 450 dollars at this point like I probably am not gonna go um next question oh my goodness can we just oh no button. Wow, this is really hard to do when you have something sitting in front of your phone. Next question, next question. I lost strength since I lowered my body weight. Is that possible or is it physiological? Uh, or psychological. Can't read. Um, it's definitely possible. Um, if you dieted and you lost muscle, then it's very possible that you lost strength. It's also possible that it's psychological or it's possible that you just have new leverages that you haven't quite learned yet. So I think that's a big thing that people don't look at when they lose weight or gain weight is that you are literally not in like the same body that you were in when you first started lifting. So when you lose or gain weight, you need to learn how to lift in your new body type, in your new body shape. Hi, Chris. Hi, baby. Um, so yeah, if you lose or gain weight, it's very possible that you lose strength or feel like you lose strength. Um, it's possible that you actually lost the strength or it's possible that you just need to adjust your form and be flexible to changing the way that you lift because most people get stuck in the rut of like, well, this is how I squat. And it's like, well, it doesn't have to be how you squat. If you've changed and your body's changed, then it's very possible that it's just not optimal for your body to squat that way anymore. 
my hands are doughy again. Oh my goodness. My questions box. I did not plan this weather. No, I don't drink alkaline water. That was an easy one. How many mags of glutathione are you taking daily? Um, good question. I can tell you in just a second. Pause. It is a 500 milligram tab. Um, so I take 500 milligrams of glutathione. So I've done a little bit of research. I did a little bit this morning. Um, I bought it off of a recommendation from actually, like weirdly enough, my chiropractor. He um, saw that I was having like issues. My face is still breaking out a little bit, but it's definitely getting better. I had like really big, almost like cystic coming in on my cheeks here. And he noticed and he was like, hey, like you should try this, um, this supplement. It's called glutathione. And the way he put it was like, it helps to like detoxify. And when I heard that, I automatically like got turned off. Holy shit, that water's hot. Um, I automatically like got turned off because I hate the word detox because, well, that's what your body does. Like you don't need a supplement or like a tea or anything of that to like detox your body. But upon further research, I found out that your body actually naturally produces glutathione. Um, and it is what it uses to fight it, uses, it combats the free radicals in your body. Sorry, I only did a little bit of research, so it's hard for me to speak on it too much. But it combats the free radicals in your body and helps. It's what your organs produce in order to detox themselves. Um, so when, yeah. And then I was looking into like a study. There was a study that was done on people who don't have issues with acne and the people who have issues with acne. And they took skin samples from like their actual acne and then also a skin sample just from like their arm or something and people who had issues with acne actually had a lower um had lower levels of glutathione in their blood than or on their skin whatever in their body than people who didn't have issues with acne so a lot of people who have acne and problems with that are actually just glutathione deficient and, um, what's my bread bowl? I need to clean this up so I can let my bread rise. Um, so yeah, people who are glutathione deficient are generally people who have acne. And so I think that I am glutathione deficient and that's why I'm having issues with my acne. Um, sorry if this is loud. That sounds like alkaline water. Alkaline water is not glutathione. That doesn't even make sense. Um... Would I date someone weaker than you? I have before. I mean, but it's just like, honestly, rel weaker, weaker is very relative. Um, it really doesn't matter to me, like, how much they lift as long as they're active. Like, I don't really care what you put up in the gym. What I care about is, like, if you're a nice person. That's, and that goes for, like, all aspects of my life. I don't really give a fuck, like, how much you lift. I don't care how active you are. I don't care how many Instagram followers you have. Holy shit, this water's hot. I don't care how many Instagram followers you have. I don't care how much you lift. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care what your ranking is on open power lifting. Um, what I care about is how you treat people. And it does not matter how strong you are if you treat people like shit. And yeah, that's it. Welcome to my TED Talk on that topic. And where are we at? Okay, these are two, like, very weird things to put together. Uh, my Benchmax... Oh, hi! Hi, Caesar. Um, my Benchmax is... Oh my god, your name is literally Drink Alkaline 9.5. Jesus Christ, no wonder you're asking about alkaline water. Um, my Max and Bench, the most I've done for 200... It, for, bench is 200 for a double in the gym. And the most I've done for cleans, I think, is 185. Yeah. I didn't jerk it, though. Just, like, clean. Burr, 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 burr. Next question. How fast should you add... Blah, blah, blah. How fast should you add weight when you're trying to lift heavier? Um, so, the way... If you're just doing, like, a linear progression, it just depends what your max is. But most people will only add 5 to 10 pounds per week. 
So you shouldn't be going from like 100 to 120 to 140. Like if your max is like 200, if your max is 200, I would go from like 85 maybe like 90 to like 95 to 100 to 105 to 110 like very slowly add weight and then you will get stronger from there um next question there's like my sound effects armin van buren or tiesto oh armin van buren easy on that one my favorite pokey spot oh it's easy it's in hawaii uh alicia's same place i talked about that first they asked me, like, my favorite food spot in Hawaii. Um, same place for poke. It's Alicia's. It's this tiny little market. It is best food on island. Best local food on island. Um, and I don't have a favorite poke spot here because I haven't found, like, Hawaiian poke here. I found California poke, and I don't like it. Um, next music fest. So I'm hoping it's going to be EDC, but I'm not sure, honestly. I'm just... I'm just not sure. Okay, let me put my bread. Oh, oh, this dough is so sticky. Hopefully that means my bread will be lighter. Because last time my bread has been like really dense. And so I thought if I put less flour in it this time, it'll be less dense. But I'm not a professional baker, so like, I don't fucking know. Um, yeah, you right, JP. Poke when it's pulverized is garbage. Yeah, it's, like, weird. The poke here is weird, and they put, like, weird toppings in it, and it's just, it's just not my jam. I just don't really like it. Um, I mean, it doesn't taste bad. It's just not good. <laughs> um, my favorite deadlift for accessories for deadlift and why? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um... Would you count, like, deadlift variations as an accessory? Are you still on here? Oh, wait a second. But if you count, like, deadlift variations as an accessory... Let me know. Yes! Supermarket on North Shore. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, if you ever go back to Hawaii... Hi! T! Oh my god, hi. Yeah, JP, if you ever go back to Hawaii, you have to go to Alicia's. Like, it's so tiny, and it's, like, not... There's no tourists at all, which is awesome. It's, like, all local and... Best poke on island. Easily. Easily. Um, okay, my favorite accessory for deadlifts. Ooh. Oh, that's hard. Alright, I'm like really weird. I really like sumo RDLs. Those are really fun to me. Um, I really feel like that stretch. Yeah, oh my god, fresh catch. Dude! Oh my god, I forgot. Fresh catch is so good. Um... You too, JP. Have a good night. Um, I just answered that question. I don't know if I'm going to EDC. It just depends. If I have to, like, pay for a full, like, if I end up having to pay for the ticket, like, super last minute, probably not. But if I can find a way around it, I might. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I want to. Um. Hey, Peter. Hi, babe. Um, beep, 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 beep. how much do I weigh? I'm 180 pounds. Yeah, but favorite accessory for deadlift, sumo RDLs or snatch grips. I really like snatch grip deadlifts. Yeah, those are my two favorites. I used to hate snatch grips, but I like them now. Do I power lift all year round? Yes. I don't really do anything else. Uh, I do a little bit of weightlifting, I guess. I'm not good, though. I'm real bad. Real bad at weightlifting. Do your math. Do the math. Go Google it. In kilograms. Go Google it. 180 pounds. Go Google it in kilos. Um, yeah, but yeah, so I do a little bit of weightlifting, but I'm like not good. My sponsors, United Lifters, they're more like a weightlifting brand, so Dennis teaches me, he teaches me a little bit, but I'm like not good at all, so whatever. Okay, let me see if I missed any questions in here. I'm going to scroll back through. Do, 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 do. IV therapy company. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. I want to get a glutathione drip. Highest rank in powerlifting competition. What kind of question is that? I don't know. First? 
best lifter. I don't know. I've gotten a best lifter and I've gotten a first. Um, yeah, I had a coach and he was a butt and I hated doing workouts. I've been there. That's uh, It sucks. You just need to find someone you get along with. SSB video. Good. I'm so glad that you learned something from that. Um, if you have any questions about stuff like that, just go ahead and like comment or DM me about like questions on my, um, on my like educational videos. I answer all my DMs that are like not weird. If you're going to DM me something weird, I'm probably just going to block you. But, um, if you have like genuine questions and you need to learn something, um, I answer all my DMs pretty much. Um, who would want to break up with you? Uh, someone who's a fucking asshole. That's who. Ember. Okay. I think I got all these. Um, accessory work. Uh, so I rotate my accessory work, but I usually keep it for like six to eight to, I usually keep it for a whole block. Like I'll keep my accessory work the same for a whole block and then I'll change it like as the blocks go. But, um, at the moment I just do what Trevor tells me to do because I tried to program myself and your girl can't take it. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. I think that's it. Yeah. Does anyone else have questions? Let's see, I'm scrolling back down to the bottom now. Do you know Dennis? No, I don't know who that is. Dennis Silp. No, I don't know who that is. I am bad at weightlifting, Donnie. Don't lie to me. I know. I know it's true. I'm not good. I mean, I'm not terrible, but I'm not good. Um, if you have any other legitimate questions that I haven't answered already, I will answer them. Give it a couple more minutes, otherwise I'm just going to get off here pretty soon. So I can cook my dinner for my man. Have a nice night. Bye. Have a good night. Okay. I think that's it then. I'm just going to sign off. And, yeah, if you have any other questions, go ahead and send me a DM. I answer, like I said, all legitimate DMs. Oh, what am I baking cooking? Uh, so I'm going to make vodka sauce with chicken. Um, so I'm going to make, like, well, not penne because I use, like, barbelli noodles. But um, so I'm going to make vodka sauce with chicken and pasta. And then I'm baking bread. I just made bread, so that's rising right now. And, ow! Ow, that water's really hot. Fuck. This is my life. Um, yeah, that's it. Pasta, bread. And then, that's it. I'll post it on my story a little bit later. Okay, bye. Thanks for participating. Thanks for coming. I hope everybody has a great night.